In this video, let's talk about model binding. When we were talking about MVC, one of the steps is that you know, after the model is populated with data, the model is then combined with the view. So this is one direction from model into the view. There is another direction where the data comes from the browser, right? Either the user inputs a URL that contains the data or the user inputs some data in the page as, as part of the form and then sent through the request to the controller. In the controller action method, we have to have a way to receive those data. And that is called model binding. We have talked about this briefly in one of the previous videos, but we didn't give it a name. In this video, let's talk more about it. Let's take example. In the categories view, we use tag helpers to generate the URL. And this is the data that we want to pass from the browser to the controller's action method. And in the controller's action method here, we have this ID, which corresponds to the root parameter name here, ID. And therefore that data is received as the parameter. This in ASP.NET Core is called model binding. And this added action method is a HTTP get action method. If we don't specify what the action method is, it corresponds to the HTTP get action method. Although everything I cover in this video also applies to other type, for example, HTTP post action method. And for model binding, the data can come from different sources. In ASP.NET Core, we can actually specify where the data come from. So in this case, the data comes from the root. So we can say from root. And then if we run the application, we are going to have, it's going to work the same way as before. So go to categories, click on edit bakery. So we can see it goes to category number two. After we specify this comes from the root, we can no longer pass the data from the query string anymore. So remember in the previous, one of the previous videos, I said that we can do something like this. Now you can see that it shows category zero. No matter what number you put here, it's always going to be zero because ASP.NET Core failed to do model binding. So in this case, if we want to specifically specify where the data comes from, right, we can actually specify the data come from query. And if we recompile and run the application, then you can see that category 133, because we specified category 133, we changed to 135, then we can see 135. But in this case, if we want to use root, then we wouldn't be able to use 135. Now this becomes zero. If we look at Microsoft documentation here, you can see that model bindings data can come from these five different places. If we don't specify where the data come from, just like what we did before, removing this attribute, then ASP.NET Core is gonna go through all of these five different places to locate the data. If it fails located data, of course, it's gonna do whatever it's gonna do, whether it's report error or it's going to provide a default value for the parameter, it's going to do what it needs to do. Another thing I wanna talk about is that for model binding right now, the data is just a simple value. It bonds to a simple type. Data binding can actually bind data to complex type. So for example, if I specify category and then the parameter becomes category. So let me comment out this line. So if I put a breakpoint here, if I run the application and then go to categories, of course, this link is not going to work anymore. You can see it didn't receive any data, but if we use query string to specify category ID is one and percent uh, name is beverage and hit enter. Now, if we check, you can see it re actually received data, right? Why it received data? It's just because the query string names corresponds to these properties in the class. Of course, we're not gonna do this. I'm just showing you different possibilities. Let's roll back to what we did before, okay? So regarding model binding, we are going to cover a little bit more in the future when we work with forms. At this moment, since we are here, 
we want to actually load categories from the data store, right? Because right now we're just passing the ID to the category. We're not actually loading the category from the data store. So let's do that. We want to use the categories repository and we want to get category by ID. Here, we just need to pass in the ID. And of course, this method here returns null if the ID doesn't exist in the data store. But I think that is okay. So we're gonna just create the category variable like this. And then here, I'm just gonna say, if it has value, then I use the value. Otherwise, I'm just going to use zero. So another thing we wanna do is let's go to the view, right click on the action method. You can click on go to view. It takes you to the view. And now that we have actual data, we don't want to actually display the category ID. Let's at least display the category name. And here we want to be defensive, right? If the model is not now, then that's when we want to render the HTML. Okay, let's run the application and give it a test. Let's go to categories and let's go to beverage. And we can see the name of the category. Go to bakery, we can see the name. Go to meat, we can see the name. Let's do a edge case testing. So let's let's say that I put in number 30. Now I don't see anything that is the correct behavior because number 30 doesn't exist. Then category returns null. Here in the view, if it's null, it's not actually going to render anything. Of course, you, you can provide a error message here. I'm not going to do that in this lesson. In this video, we have talked a little bit about the model binding and then we retrieve the data from the in-memory data store. That's everything I want to cover in this video. I'll see you in the next one.